بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Our video today is a continuation of uh, interleukin 17 lectures And as we know from the previous lectures that the uh, main aim of interleukin 17 secretion is protection However, interleukin 17 could lead to uh, inflammatory or autoimmune diseases uh, that's why our video today is about how this interleukin-17 is regulated to avoid uh, any pathology starting from cytokine storm uh, to uh, autoimmune or inflammatory diseases. So during an infection caused by either pathogens or commensal microorganisms, interleukin-17 is generated. And although uh, interleukin-17 is not exclusively directed towards self-antigens, it can still trigger or worsen autoimmune diseases by activating autoreactive T helper 17 cells. Also, the presence of interleukin-17 resulting from an infection or inflammation without any infection can contribute to the development of a range of illnesses such as cardiovascular and neuroinflammatory diseases, uh, neutrophilic asthma, cytokine storms, and sepsis. That's why targeting interleukin-17 is considered a therapeutic option for these conditions. Uh, and while the fact that interleukin-17 is generated as a reaction to nearly all infections, the majority of individuals are not affected by uh, the hazards like autoimmune disorders or inflammatory disorders. And why this happens? This happens because of the presence of effective host tolerance and regulatory mechanisms that uh, will manage autoreactive T helper 17 and interleukin 17 triggered inflammatory reactions. These regulatory mechanisms include uh, Treg alternatively activated macrophages M2, anti-inflammatory cytokines, and immune checkpoints. Uh, T-Rex, which uh, either derived from thymus or induced in the periphery, plays a vital role in the regulating T helper 17, preventing autoimmunity and immunopathology caused by infection. So the co-induction of T-Rex at the same time with effector T cells is critical and the balance between them can determine the outcome of these diseases. Uh, in this diagram, you can see uh, more clearly the battle that occurs between any invading pathogen and the human body. So we have the, uh, here uh, on the protection uh, side all cells that uh, share in uh, inducing in, uh, uh, reaction against invading pathogens like T helper 17 cells and uh, interleukin-17 CD8 positive T cells, uh, gamma delta uh, interleukin-17 cells, T helper 1 cells, natural color cells. This produce a lot of cytokines like interleukin-17 A and F, interleukin-22 tumor necrosis factor, and uh, interferon gamma with the help of uh, these cells also neutrophils, macrophages, epithelial cells. Uh, these cytokines will activate these cells to attack the bacteria and fungi, any invading pathogen. And from the other side, the body protects itself against any harmful effect of this uh, reaction or inflammation uh, through uh, T. rex that comes from uh, thymus or T. rex from periphery. And we have also M2 macrophages or alternatively activated macrophages and uh, T. helper 2 cells and innate lymphoid cells type 2. And these cells produce uh, uh, cytokines like interleukin-10, transforming growth factor beta, interleukin-35, and interleukin-4, and interleukin-13. And also we have here immune checkpoints, which is BD1 or, uh, and CTLA4. Uh, uh, these immune checkpoints uh, make suppression to uh, the uh, immune reaction, so it uh, preventing it from uh, doing further uh, uh, damage or pathology. Uh, interleukin-10 and interferon gamma 
are also involved in regulating uh, interleukin-17 production uh, in the situation of autoimmune disorders. Uh, actually, we have regulatory type T helper 17 cells. These regulatory type T helper 17 cells produce both interleukin-17 and interleukin-10 and uh, are generated when uh, there is interleukin-6 and transforming growth factor beta. Uh, so these cells, the regulatory T helper 17 cells, are not pathogenic. On the other side, T helper 17 cells that arise under the effect of interleukin-1 beta and interleukin-23 do not produce interleukin-10, so they are highly pathogenic. So again, T helper 17 producing interleukin 17 and interleukin 10 in the same time will manage infection without causing harmful effect. On the other side, inflammatory pathology in autoimmunity may arise only when interleukin 17 is generated without interleukin 10. And this phenomenon partially uh, explains how the same cell type can contribute to both autoimmunity and protective immunity uh, uh, against infection in the same time. Uh, another cytokine, interleukin-27, which was initially known as a cytokine that promotes T helper 1 cells, was found to uh, modulate T helper 17 cells. Interleukin-27 has a suppressive impact on T helper 17 cells, uh, which is achieved by uh, lowering the activation of interleukin-1 and interleukin-23, uh, which typically stimulate the activity of T helper 17 cells and gamma-delta T17 cells. Uh, and also recent evidence suggests that the immune checkpoints uh, may play a part in regulating interleukin-17 production. And that is why the use of anti-immune uh, checkpoints like anti-BD1, uh, anti-BDL1, uh, or anti-CTLA4 uh, antibodies to treat cancers has been linked to the emergence of autoimmune and inflammatory symptoms which could be mediated by interleukin-17. Because when we give uh, anti-checkpoints antibodies, uh, we, we are going to leave the interleukin-17 uncontrolled. And to remind you, immune checkpoints uh, refer to molecules that act as gatekeepers of the immune uh, responses uh, they are inhibitory regulator of the immune system. The equilibrium between protective and pathogenic immune responses uh, is dependent partially on genetic factors. However, exposure to pathogens and commensal microorganisms can have a significant effect on this equilibrium. And that's why recent understanding of the hygiene hypothesis uh, has proposed that infection with anti-inflammatory commensal bacteria or helminth parasites can uh, lessen or decrease the autoimmune disorders mediated by T helper 17. Uh, for example, in multiple sclerosis, helminth infection was found to uh, be linked to a decrease in uh, severity of uh, the disease, and this be, uh, has been uh, related to the production of interleukin-35 by regulatory B-cell, and we know that from the previous diagram, interleukin-35 is one of the regulator uh, cytokines of interleukin-17 uh, activity. Also, environmental factors can regulate the formation of T helper 17 cells. For example, high salt conditions can facilitate the emergence of highly pathogenic T helper 17 cells that release granulocyte monocyte colony stimulating factor, tumor necrosis factor, and interleukin 2. 
by activating what's called nuclear factor of activated T cells 5, NFAT5, and serum glucocorticoid regulator kinase SGK1. And while the regulation of interleukin-17 production has mainly based around T helper 17 cells, uh, it's important to remember that uh, other in, uh, cells like innate immune cells such as gamma delta T cells and uh, hybrid of uh, alpha beta gamma delta T cells can also uh, serve as a critical source of early interleukin-17 in some conditions. Uh, activation of these uh, innate cells is induced by interleukin-1 beta and interleukin-23 uh, without the need for TCR engagement. And that's why uh, they escape from the mechanisms that regulate uh, conventional CD4 positive and CD8 positive uh, uh, alpha beta uh, T cells that produce interleukin-17, which uh, depends mainly on inhibition of antigen-presenting cell functions. So uh, these innate cells escape the regulatory mechanisms based uh, that depend on TCR uh, engagement. And we have to know uh, that uh, uh, vitamin D3 now is recognized for its potent immunomodulatory uh, functions. Vitamin D3 can restore the immune balance in chronic inflammatory disorders and autoimmune diseases by inducing tolerance. Uh, because uh, vitamin D can make shift of the immune system response from the T helper 17 cells towards the uh, regulatory T reg uh, uh, cells, thereby limiting a T helper 17 cells development. This paper was published in Frontiers in Immunology, July 2022, and it's titled Vitamin D3 Priming of Dendritic Cells Shift Human Neutrophil Dependent uh, T Helper 17 Cell Development to Regulatory T Cells. So vitamin D3 can affect uh, this uh, uh, equilibrium and make shift from T Helper 17 pathogenic type to the regulatory T cells. And uh, at present, all approved treatments targeting uh, the interleukin-17 interleukin-17 receptor pathway are monoclonal antibodies. However, the use of these monoclonal antibodies has been linked to certain adverse effects, and infection is one of the top, uh, including uh, frequent uh, candida or upper respiratory tract infections. Uh, because that interleukin-17 can have both protective and harmful effects on the immune system, uh, it may be more preferable to have a more precise approach that will uh, elevate the host in uh, inherited immunoregulatory mechanisms. Uh, these mechanisms can selectively inhibit interleukin-17 responses to self-antigens or uh, within a specific affected tissues. Uh, so potentially avoiding unwanted inflammation and tissue damage. I, I hope that you like the video and uh, before I finish, I want to remind you again to subscribe the, to the channel and activating the alarming bell. Thank you.